Hi, a few days ago I saw this video. I made a tutorial on how to create large scale oceans in Blender. Here's the new and improved version that we'll be making today. And I thought to myself, well, this is very interesting, very inspiring tutorial, but I think I can manage to do something similar in just simpler ways, just using only shaders. So after spending not so much time on mixing different noises, especially Voronoi noises, in the shader editor, I managed to have something like this. No fancy tools, no complex modifiers, just not so complex shader. So let's get right into it. Okay, so let's start by setting up our lighting by adding some sky texture. So we are now going to the shader editor and let's add the sky texture node. Now plug it to the background node. We don't need to change anything for now. And now just see how it looks like. And this is what we need for now. And now we can add our plane which will be our ocean. You can go to the edit mode and scale it up a little bit, like maybe three times. Yeah, this will be good for now. And now we can just create new material for our object. We are going to need texture coordinate node and mapping node. And now we need to connect them like this, from UVs to the vector. And now let's add Voronoi texture and we can say that will be our main character in this tutorial. Connect the vectors and click normalize. Change the dimensions from 3D to 4D. And now, as you can see, we have that W factor here, which is necessary when we want to animate our texture. Now let's add a displacement node and connect the distance to the height socket. Link displacement to the material output and change the color to some maybe brownish, yellowish brownish, you know, some basic ocean color. And set the roughness close to zero so we can have some cool reflections. And for now, it might not look so amazing right now, but if we go to the modifiers tab and add some subdivision surface, and we choose adaptive subdivision, and then we'll go to the material properties and change the displacement settings from the bump to the displacements and bump. And also if we change the scale in our displacement node in our shader, we will see the influence of the Voronoi texture on our model. Great, this is looking good enough for now. Now we can play around with those settings in Voronoi. As you can see, this W factor is changing the wave shapes, so we can use it later for animation, like I said before. And now we can change the feature output to smooth F1. We can adjust the details. And as you can see, there's that smoothness slider. And I think that we can set this like around 0.1 just to eliminate that sharpness. But at the same time, not to make it like uh, too smooth. Now we need to add RGB curves node so we can adjust the pointedness of our waves. So we need to put that between distance socket in Voronoi texture and the height socket in displace node. And as you can see, when you adjust the shape of the curve like, like I did, the waves now look just more believable. So we have our basic shape for our waves and now we need to add some details and we can do this by copying our Voronoi texture node and copying also the displacement and we can connect it like this. We need to add vector math so we can combine these two displacements. Adjust the scale in our second Voronoi and let's see how it looks right now. <laughs> well, it's not looks like uh, ocean yet but we can adjust some parameters. For example, uh, here the scale of the, the second displacement. Yeah, that looks much better. We can adjust the curves a little bit. Maybe we should bring down the details of our first Voronoi. Yeah, definitely this is, this is way better. And actually, 
actually we we almost have it now we need to add some foam so let's go back to the shader editor create new principal bsdf node make it like almost white but not not 100 percent white and set the roughness like very high something close to one add mix shader and connect the shaders like like this it might look like a snow right now but don't worry we'll fix that by adding some mask and in order to do this we need to add another Voronoi texture add another rgb curves and now let's see the preview of our mask by clicking ctrl and shift and click on the curves node and now make it more contrasty Okay, let's see how it looks. Well, not like it's supposed to. We probably need to swap the connections in mix shader. Yeah, definitely. Let's adjust the curves a little more. Something like this. And now we need to do something with this transition from the water to the foam. And we can do this like this. Add the color mix node. Link both of these four noise textures uh, to the A and B socket. And now connect this mixed color to color socket in RGB curves. Let's see how it looks like. Okay. Uh, maybe we can play around with the scale of this third Voronoi. Maybe add more details. Bring up the roughness a little bit. Maybe tweak this curve a little bit. Okay, this looks pretty cool. Yeah, we can tweak it a little bit more, but this is not necessary. If you want, you can do whatever you want with this. And now I'm going to create some simple animation for our, our waves. Okay, so what we need to do is to connect that two W factors. Uh, in our first and second Voronoi, just connect it together into one value. As you can see, I just added that value node and connect that to the Voronoi's. Let's bring the timeline here. And all we need to do is to insert keyframe in our value in the beginning of our animation, change that value to, for example, one, and go to the end of our animation and also insert the keyframe. We can change the interpolation mode to linear. And this is our animation. And as you can see, I haven't used any baking or anything that is too complicated. And because we have used the procedural textures, uh, we have no problem with tiling, for example. We can make it uh, way bigger and it's just gonna work. So let's make it bigger. First of all, let's go back to the modifiers and change the subdivision type to Catmull Clark. And let's scale our plane like 50 times up maybe. And apply the scale by pressing Ctrl A and choosing scale. Now, as you probably noticed, we lost our waves. So we need to go to the UV editor and scale our UVs also like 50 times. And now the rest is up to you. You can finish your scene as you want. I have downloaded that island model from Blender Kit, added some fog and animate the camera and adjust the lighting, render it and color grade it in After Effects. And so that's it. What do you think about this method? You can answer me in the comment section below. In the description of this video, you will find links to the CG Trader, Fab and Unity Asset Store and also Blender Market, Super Hive I mean, where you can buy my assets. And also you can find the Blender file from this tutorial in the description and so you can download it for free.
So I hope you liked that video and you learned something new. So if you don't mind, put that thumbs up somewhere. Thank you for watching and we'll see each other in the next one. See ya.